Hey everyone, this is London. Excited to be here in this tutorial for ActionVFX.com. Today we're going to look at compositing muzzle flashes. And this is important because we all know it's easy to create that fake blank looking muzzle flash. So today we're going to do all we can just to really blend that into the scene as naturally as possible. So I've recreated this scene like six times over just to really find the best way to do things. So no matter what skill level you're coming from, uh, you should be able to learn something. We're going to be using the uh, muzzle flashes from actionvfx.com. Uh, specifically, since it's coming from a pistol, we're going to use these uh, 42 pistol muzzle flashes. And these work really well because there's a lot of variety, you know, three different angles. You can rotate it however you need. And it's really high resolution. So these are going to work really well, and that's what we're going to be using today. So let me go ahead and start showing you guys some of the awesome stuff you can do with these muzzle flashes. Uh, so here's, uh, we're in After Effects CC 2017. Uh, After Effects is one of the best compositing software, definitely. Uh, but here's our footage right here. Let's go ahead and double click. Let me show you guys. Here's Rodolf. He's shooting the pistol. And we're going to add a muzzle flash just to really make it look good. So let's go ahead and drag this uh, footage into a new composition. This new composition icon right here. Just drag it in there. And it creates a new composition with all the uh, settings matching the footage. All right, so we're ready to go ahead and start. Now, the first thing we always want to do when making muzzle flashes is mark the time when the muzzle flash needs to happen. Alright, so I want it to happen right when that slide goes back. We want to be consistent about that. I don't want to, you know, this time do it when the slide goes back and then the next time do it one frame before. Let's be consistent about when the muzzle flash comes in. Alright, so right when the slide goes back is when I'm going to create that marker and that's when the muzzle flash is going to appear. So over there on the right side of your keyboard where the num number pad is, there's a little star. You can click that and it creates a little uh, marker on your footage. So I'm going to go through and do this for all six shots right here be consistent about when I create these markers so now it's time to bring in those muzzle flashes so I've got like six muzzle flashes right here uh, that I got from action VFX of course and there's just like six random muzzle flashes that I picked out because that's how many shots there are so I'm gonna grab all six of these muzzle flashes and just drag them into my composition above my footage so you can see off the bat these things are actually pre keys so there's actually transparency in the footage uh, what I want to do right now is just separate these out. So just grab them and move them around separate them from each other. Alright, just like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to position the anchor point of the layer right at the origin of the muzzle flash. Alright, at the end of the barrel. Alright, so we're going to solo each uh, footage and then we're going to click the anchor point tool up here. And then we're going to move that anchor point to the origin of the flash. And that's really going to help us out throughout our project when we scale and rotate and position these muzzle flashes. So it's definitely worth the work just to go ahead and position those anchor points in the right spot. So what I'm doing here is actually soloing the layer by clicking this um, button right here. And I can just see it by itself. Alright, now I have all six anchor points positioned in the right place. And I'm showing you guys a lot of uh, efficient techniques. Because, you know, muzzle flashes are something you want to get in there and do real quick. You know, add into your footage. So hopefully you guys can catch these efficiency techniques as you, you know, go through the tutorial. Alright, so the next step is to trim these to the beginning of each uh, marker. So we'll go ahead and trim these from top to bottom to start at each marker. So it doesn't really matter, I guess, which muzzle flash is where since they're all pretty similar. Just kind of a random variation of a pistol muzzle flash. So you can see what I did here. I trimmed the beginning of each uh, muzzle flash to the time of the marker. All right, So that makes sense. And what we can do, since we want these to be one frame, is just trim these all the way down like this. And I think that's probably the easiest way to do it. So now these muzzle flashes last one frame, but they're not in the right spot, obviously. So let's go ahead and position these muzzle flashes in the right spot. Just click on this layer and position it right where the anchor point is at the end of the gun barrel right there. All right, so what we need to do is think about the size of this muzzle flash. Okay, I know a lot of people actually make the flash way too big, and it's just so unrealistic. You don't want to make it too big. Don't over-exaggerate. Um, but a good rule of thumb is to make the flash as large as the pistol itself. All right, so we're going to make it just about that size. The size of the size is pretty good. And we'll just rotate this correctly. So what we can do is come up here to the rotation tool, and just rotate this layer to match the rotation of the gun. Now, if it's not rotated right, it'll definitely be noticeable. Even if it's one flash, you'll definitely notice. So make sure and rotate those flashes correctly, just like that. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the next flash and do the same thing. What we'll do is position it. Think about the scale if it's too small. And you can change the size of the layer, obviously, just by grabbing these little controls right here, holding shift. You just change the size of the scale. So that right there looks pretty good. It's about the size of the gun itself. So click the rotation tool and just rotate it correctly. I'm going to do this for all six flashes. So here the muzzle flash is actually facing the wrong direction. So how do we fix this? We can right click, do transform, flip horizontal, or we can just simply grab the rotation tool and 
just rotate it around. All right, so either way works. Sometimes you actually be able to tell the muzzle flash is upside down, but it, you know it's just a flash. It's just, no one should be able to tell. All right, so just kind of rotate that correctly. You get two ways to flip it. So I probably uh, recommend doing the flip horizontal, you know, method. You know, either way works decent. And these probably need to be a little bit bigger because um, uh, the gun's closer. So just go ahead and uh, rotate this correctly. So now I've got a flash position for every shot. So that's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and take a preview. I know you guys like to see previews. Let's see what we're doing so far. All right, so that definitely looks pretty good, but we wouldn't want to stop here, would we? Because they definitely remind me of those fake blank looking muzzle flash I was talking to you about before. So what we can do is actually duplicate the flash by hitting Control D. We'll just move this back one previous frame, go back to that frame, and just position it correctly and then scale it down. So this is really going to give the viewer sense that the muzzle flash is actually coming out of the gun rather than something that's just like popping there, all right? But we definitely do not want to do this for every single muzzle flash because then it's like a pattern. The viewers will see the pattern of you know the small muzzle flash, larger muzzle flash, you know, disappear. So we only want to do this for about two or three frames. All right, so I'm gonna do it for this last frame as well. So I'm gonna duplicate it by hitting Control D. All right, move that back one frame, and then just position it and really scale it down. All right, so something like that. So that's not gonna look very good right now. Let's go ahead and precompose all of these. And we want to move all attributes into new composition. And don't check this because we want it to last the entire composition. The whole composition. Alright. So that's good right there. Alright. So the first thing we really need to change is the blending mode. Alright. So you can see actually in, in some parts the flash actually makes the background darker. And that's not right because the fire should brighten always. What we need to do is change the blending mode right here. And if you don't see it, toggle switches modes until you see it right here. So click on it and change it to something like screen, all right? So it kind of, in a sense, adds the colors together to always brighten. So if it's like black, then it's going to, you know, do plus zero. So it's not going to darken, all right? So it kind of adds the colors together. And screen is definitely the recommended blending mode for, like, muzzle flashes and things like that. All right, so off the bat, that definitely looks much better. All right, so you can see sometimes it just fades away too quickly. It's like there and then it's gone. And then we want to kind of blend it in throughout time a little more so I've got a really good technique for doing this let me show you guys how to do this so I'm gonna go ahead and rename this alright so let's go ahead and duplicate this flashes layer click the layer and hit control D and then we'll move it one frame forward and let's go to our effects and presets and type in like fast blur alright so we're gonna really just gonna blur this out like that so let's just this haze this leftover haze alright so let's go ahead and solo the layer and go ahead and kind of customize this a little better so let's go to Turbulent Displace, and we're going to do something kind of cool. Check this out. We're just going to, you know, turn up that complexity of the Turbulent Displace. It's just going to give it this smoky look. So that looks pretty good. Double-click on Turbulent Displace, go to Compositing Options, and just turn the Effect Opacity down to like 75, so it kind of blends in. And we want it to be a little more red. So add the Tenth Effect, and then we'll just apply this to the Flashes 2, and make this a little more red, and just change the Amount Tint just as you like it. All right, that looks good, and we'll call this Flash Fade. All right, so it kind of fades out the flash. What we want to do is actually just turn this down a little bit. So click T for opacity, just turn this down a little bit. So it's just a, kind of a subtle effect, maybe something like 50% for my particular shot. All right, I love the way it, like the flash popped at the end. It's really good, and it gives that powerful uh, sense to it. All right, so what we really need to do is work on that beginning um, mini flash there. And it doesn't blend in very well. It doesn't look too natural. So what we're actually going to do is go inside that flash's composition. And we're just going to work on this a little bit. So just create a, an adjustment layer. Control, turn it Y is the best way to do it. And what we do is just trim this down to that one single frame. And what we want to do is add a CC radial fast blur. And this is really going to help. Check this out. I'll move the center point to something like right here. And just kind of turn that amount up a little bit. And that's really going to make it look like it's coming out of the gun like really fast. So go to the opacity of this uh, adjustment layer and turn it down. And then go to the opacity of the original flash layer and turn that down. Alright, so let's go ahead and see how that looks now. Alright, so that definitely helps. And now it's going to blend in much better with the real flash that comes in one frame later. And then we need to do that for our other flash as well. Or just do the same techniques. Alright, so that's looking pretty realistic. I mean, you could probably stop here, but we're going to do a bunch of things and make it look like way better. 
Alright, so first off, I really just want to turn down the brightness of this background layer. Type in curves. And we're just going to use the curves effect to darken this background layer just a little bit to make that flash pop out a little more. Just like that. Alright, so now what we need to do is add that glow to the flash. And this is the fun part, the exciting fun part where we add that glow. But just before we do that, we need to add a solid composite effect because there's transparency in the background and glow doesn't work well with transparency. So let me go ahead and turn that on so we can show you guys. Add a solid composite effect um, to the flashes and then we want to make this black because we don't want to see the background. So make the background black. So that's awesome. So there's no transparency in the background. Let's go ahead and add the first glow effect. Type glow in the effects and presets panel. Drag this onto our flash and I'm excited because the glow is really where it looks good. Um, but before you mess with it, make sure in your project panel it's set to 32 BPC. And we won't talk about it now, but you definitely want to set it to 32 bits per channel. Just hold alternate and click that number until it says 32 BPC. And make sure and do that. So now let's go ahead and start working on our glow. So let's turn the glow threshold pretty much all the way down because we want all those colors to glow pretty much. And then turn that glow radius up. Oh, so that's looking good. Uh, now it's far too intense, so let's turn that down. Oh yeah, so th this is going to look pretty good. Now we need to turn this glow operation to screen, just like that. And let me turn that intensity up a little bit. Turn that radius up a little bit. Just like that. Oh, that's looking good. We need to turn the glow colors to our custom A and B colors, and then turn the color looping to the sawtooth A is greater than B thing. That works the best. And then what we need to do is turn the color B to a more of a darker red, you know, reddish orange color, and then the color A to more of a bright yellow color, more of an intense center color. Yeah. There we go. And then turn the glow intensity up now that we did that. So just like that. Mmm. Yeah, just like that. Perfect. I'll also duplicate this glow layer. Maybe even turn actually it to add so we can have a little bit of that intensity in there. And then just turn the radius up a lot. So it's going to be kind of a hazy, you know, glow to it. And then turn that intensity down. We might not be able to do add because that's kind of blowing it out a little bit. Let's just, let's just do screen to, you know, be on the safe side. So let's take a before and after of this. Before the glow and then after the glow. Boom. Yes. Now let's go ahead and composite this into our scene and look how much it just blends in with that glow. Awesome. Mmm. Yes. Oh, perfect. Um, so now what we need to do is actually work on, you know, making the environment flash. All right. So the first thing I like to do is create an area flash. So create an adjustment layer, control alternate Y, and then we'll call this area flash. Alrighty. So what we need to do is kind of make a kind of a rough mask around the muzzle flash and the subject kind of the foreground just like that awesome doesn't need to be particular it's kind of one of those messy things you can just kind of work around with let's go to these middle flashes right here just kind of change it make sure to add that keyframe to your mask path so just kind of like that all right and let's go to that last bit and let's change that back we have the area flash let's go ahead and add a curves effect to this area flash Alright, so let's go ahead and brighten this up. Just grab the gamma and lift it up. And you want to add some contrast, bring those shadows down just to make it look a little more natural. So there we go. We can kind of see how it brightens. Just like that. Now we want to kind of turn it red because it's kind of fire, you know, fire's kind of red. And then um, turn down the blues to make it a little more yellow. So that looks pretty good right there. All looks good. Alright, so what we're going to do is feather this out. So click F for feather and then just feather it all the way out. Just 1,000 pixels all the way. So that looks good right there. So now the problem is that the the area flash is there even when there's not a muzzle flash. So we need to animate the opacity so that the area flash only exists when the muzzle flash happens. So go to the first muzzle flash, hit T for opacity, add a keyframe, go back one frame, turn the opacity down to zero, and then go forward two frames after the 100% opacity and just turn that down to zero. So it has one frame to fade out, all right? So it pops into existence and then fades out. So that's good. So this is actually quite easy because what we're going to do is hit control C and then go one frame before each marker, control V, control V, control, and it's pretty easy. We just hit control V because we already had that animated, so we just paste and paste. So we did like six multi flashes that easy, so that's a, another efficiency technique. Yeah, awesome. All right, so now we have that animated and it looks good. If, you, if it's not visible enough, you think it needs to be a little more visible, just hit MM, that will open your mask properties. Turn the expansion up so it makes it a little more visible. We turn that expansion up so it expands the mask border so that you can see it a little better. There we go. Just do it to where you think it looks best. Alright, now I do want to warn you not to go too crazy with this because sometimes the effects are noticeable and sometimes it will look a little fake if you do too extreme. Alright? So now what we're going to do is something 
equally if not more important is add that flash to the face and I just can't emphasize about how important this is to add the flash to the face because a lot of times when they're shooting the you know the viewers actually watching the actors face and when you see that flash on there it just really makes the scene so guys it's really important to make that face flash alright so that's what we're gonna do now so since this already has the right opacity keyframes let's just duplicate that layer hit control D and now we have another layer let's go ahead and delete the mask all right, so let's go ahead and go to that first keyframe. Right now there's not a mask, so it just brightens up everything. Let's add a mask to his face, all right? So let's just go ahead and kind of mask out the part of his face that's facing the gun, just like that, all right? So we'll do that, and it doesn't have to be too precise like the other one. Let's go ahead and add a keyframe, and let's go to each uh, muzzle flash, and let's animate this uh, mask to the side of his face that's kind of you know, towards the gun. Alright, so now I have it animated throughout the whole thing. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of feather because, you know, it needs, it needs to blend in with the scene a little more. So hit F, add some feather to that, just like that. So it's going to kind of make his face glow. And it might be a little too intense. You make, you mess with the colors and might not make it so red, just like that. Just make it kind of brighten up. So if it's too intense, like that might be a little too intense just right there. Um, so what we can do is go to the T, go to the opacity, add an expression by holding Alt and click the stopwatch, and just divide it by 2. So we divided all those values by 2. So if it's 100% uh, opacity, it's going to divide it by 2 and make it 50. So it just makes the effect less extreme or less harsh. So now that we did that, let's go ahead and check out another preview. Awesome. Yeah, that really did. When you see that flash on the face, it just kind of makes the scene. That's that's one of the best things about this whole scene. All right, guys, we're getting pretty close to being done, but we still got some more techniques to go over. So now I want to talk about overlaying lens dirt on this scene, because when something that bright happens, usually it lights up little dust particles and stuff on the lens, and it makes it look a lot better if we just add that in there. So from actionvfx.com, the website, you can download these free lens dirt items. There's like a bunch of them. I'm going to go ahead and drag it into the scene above everything. All right, it's really high resolution, so we got to scale it down um, just like that. All right, so this, this lens dirt only needs to exist around the muzzle flash. And it's a pretty good way of doing that. What we can do is go ahead and duplicate the flashes since the flashes you know, are already in the right spot. And we need to remove all these effects because they're just going to slow down the process just like that. Let's go ahead and add a fast blur. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to fast blur this out just like that. Just give it a lot of fast blur. And again, it's very important that you're in 32 bits per channel. Otherwise, it won't be able to render those fine-tuned uh, levels of uh, transparency. So let's go ahead and go to Curves. And let's go ahead and um, turn up the Alpha channel so that it's more opaque just like that. We want it just like that. All right. So now we have a little mat that's kind of surrounding our flash, all right, because it's the flash, you know, blurred. So it's going to surround the flash no matter where the flash is. All right, so that's pretty automatic. That's one of the good things about this, you know, technique of making a mat for that lens dirt. All right, so now that we have that mat, let's make sure it's above the lens dirt. Go ahead and unsilo everything. Go to the lens dirt, and here you have this track mat option. If you don't see it, just toggle switches modes, and it'll be right here. You can just click on it and do alpha mat. So it's going to take the mat. It's going to steal the mat of the layer above itself. All right, so it took the mat from that um, from this little layer we made. And we need to make sure and turn the blending mode of this lens dirt to screen so it doesn't darken anything just like that. Let's go ahead and add some color to it. So add a tint effect. And what we can do is on the white here, just kind of turn it more of a reddish, orangish, uh, bright color. Just like that. All right. Sweet. All right. And it's up to you to judge how opaque you want these uh, lens dirt elements to be. Just kind of turn that up just however much you want. All right. So I think that looks pretty good. Alright, so there's another thing that people really like, and that's when you add like a little muzzle flash reflection on the eye. So it looks pretty cool. Let's turn this to half resolution because we're kind of zooming on in here. We need to see the detail. So um, it's really cool when you add that little eye reflection. Let me show you what I mean. Alright, so you can see here in this example that the eyes are reflecting the muzzle flash. And it really looks good because people actually notice that. They see the reflection there, and it just kind of convinces them that it's actually real footage because I mean who would edit in a little muzzle flash reflection on the eye so it just really helped convince the audience that that's a real muzzle flash and how I did this is just create a warm yellow bright solid and turn the blending mode the color dodge alright that really helped so it's just two simple masks that I animated let me go ahead and show you you can see here that I did one mask that had a little bit more feather and there was another mask that was inside of it. It was a duplicate of the mask and it had less feather. So it had that sharp inside with a little bit of glow. So that's what I did. I had two masks, one with a little more feather and one with a little less feather to add that hard core. It made it look like a flash. That was good. And then I did the same thing for the other eye. 
I added a bit of feather, and then I did another mask inside of that, which was a little sharper and more opaque. So that added that nice muzzle flash look. And we composited that over the eye with a uh, color dodge blending mode. So like I said, I went through every um, time the gun flashed and just positioned those masks over his eyes. And that's nothing hard. You just animate those masks. All right, so everything's coming together. I want to show you guys all the elements and different things we composited. Uh, so one more thing is actually the smoke. So we added a little bit of smoke. These are some uh, actually some smoke puffs, some pretty old stock footage that nothing special about them, but you can download them from the project file if you want to. But actually, Action VFX is working on some new uh, smoke elements and smoke puffs and things like that that are, of course, much higher resolution. So you guys will be looking forward to that in the future. But for now, you can go ahead and download these little smoke puffs from the project file. And that's what I use. And it works pretty well. Just, just a subtle smoke composite over the gun. and kind of helps. Nothing special about what I did to composite these. Just kind of position them, scale, and rotate, th rotate them to match. Um, the, the time and position of the gun and stuff like that. They come pre-keyed so you don't have to add any special blending modes or anything. So yeah, just position scan rotate these little smoke puffs um, to match your gun flashes and things like that. Alright, so that's the smoke. Alright, so there's one more thing we need to talk about um, and that is adding a grade to your scene, alright? So sometimes you have these muzzle flashes and you go to add a grade over it. You control and paste that grade and sometimes the grade kind of messes up the look of your flash, right? Maybe it oversaturates or something like that. But what you can actually do is move the grade below the flash, all right, just like that. So it doesn't affect the flash and that flash can have that natural raw look. Now some of you may not like the idea of adding a grade below some of your elements. But try to put it over as many elements as you can, like if you have some smoke, put it over the smoke and things like that. But I'll try to keep it below the flashes just because it retains more of a, of a organic, natural look. And that goes for a lot of things, just more than muzzle flashes. It sounds kind of weird, some of you may not like it, but it really does make the scene look better. So just keep that in mind that you can actually add the grade below certain things. Now what you can do is have a grade there the whole time and just keep turning it on and off to make sure you don't oversaturate things to make it look natural with the grade. But like I said, it's also an option to put it below um, certain elements. Alright, so there is one more thing, and that is the bullet that flew out. And this is actually a big part that, that adds to the whole scene, especially if you add sound effects, those bullet, um, when those sh bullet shells come out and you have those sound effects, it really just um, makes the scene. Um, but in this tutorial, we're not going to be able to cover it it's so long already, and that's, I do have a lot of techniques I do want to share about bullet shells, so it's kind of a lengthy process to make it look really good, so we don't have time to go over it today. But the bullet shell is definitely something I am excited about and I want to go over in a different future tutorial. So you're going to learn how to simu simulate these bullets really efficiently once you create your little engine to um, emit those bullets, alright? And I was actually really impressed by how good these bullets turned out, how natural they look. So just be looking out for that tutorial where we add those bullet shells. Also, I do want to say, make sure and comment suggestions, because when we do this bullet tutorial, we also want to go over anything anyone had any questions about, like maybe you didn't uh, understand something. So be sure to comment that, and we'll go over that when we come back to do these, uh, add these bullets. We'll try to answer some of your questions, and uh, maybe go over things we briefly mentioned, all right? So like the smoke, if you guys didn't understand that, just comment, and then we'll go over things like that in the future tutorial where we add some of these additional elements, like the bullets and things like that. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, found it helpful, learned a lot of things. I mean, compositing all those muzzle flashes and things like that. It's just the core of filmmaking and visual effects. Uh, so we really want to release more tutorials for you guys. So if you have any suggestions for tutorials you'd like to see using Action VFX stock footage, be sure to let us know in the comments. As always, visit us at actionvfx.com for more assets. We also have some great free effects on there, so go ahead and download all of them. Again, this is London. It's been so fun. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Thank you.